Hi, and welcome to Cape Shutter Toad's video on Guild Wars 2 Build and Build Theory. Um, build and Build Theory isn't ultra complicated. There are a couple of things that you want to keep in mind. Um, when I create a build, the first thing I do is actually sit down and determine what do I want to do with this build? What are the considerations that I need to keep in mind when uh, looking at the various facets of the build. And so, a typical example of uh, considerations uh, would be who is this build for? Is this for a uh, low skilled player? Is this a high skilled player? Um, is this somebody who knows the class well or who wants to first find their feet within the class? Um, what is the sort of play style that the person has? If it's a very new player, then very often they find it very difficult to be in the thick of things immediately. So running around with a sword um, becomes overwhelming. So, you know, you want to keep range for noobs, uh, for more pro players. They feel up front is quite a comfortable place for them to be at. And what role does this person play? Um, is this going to be a DPS type of character that da does damage from afar? Is this somebody who needs to be able to get onto a point and contest it or keep it? Um, is this going to be a roamer class which is quite tough but um, the whole point of being is to run to points um, very quickly and uh, contest them? So where do you see this character actually fitting within to the game? Um, some example criteria uh, for this particular build is I want it to be easy to play. Uh, it's going to be a ranger build, uh, specifically because of the range facet to it and that you have uh, your pet as, as assistance and it's also a very 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 easy class to start new players off. Um, because this build is going to be for somebody who is new to PvP, new to the class, um, it has to be a survivable and durable uh, build. So because of that it must have decent condition removal, it must have access to stability, it must be tough. Um, and uh, the person must be able to to keep a point with it but also to be able to do 1v1s if necessary um, so what are the steps that I use typically to define a build well the first thing is to look at what skills do I need uh, for the type of gameplay and the characteristics that I'm aiming for uh, it doesn't help that I want to use a durable uh, ranged type of class and then trade into things that put me into the thick of things. Um, look at what traits assist in what I want to do. In other words, are there any traits that complement uh, the skills that I have selected and the, that buff me in the right direction? So if I want to have a tough build, um, then I want to look at traits that provide me with toughness. If I want to have a DPS build, then I want to have a look at something that either boosts my precision or power or both. Um, and then what weapons are best suited for what I'm trying to accomplish? Uh, it's a bit of a chicken and egg scenario. Sometimes people like to look at the weapons first and then see what traits buff the weapons. Sometimes uh, you want to look at the traits and say well what weapons best suit the traits that I'm selecting. Uh, they are interchangeable um, but depending on the build uh, you'll probably figure out which one you need to do first. Um, so if for argument's sake say uh, you're a ranger and you want to play with a longbow then uh, you can go and look at the traits and see well what traits are there that actually support the longbow um, and then number four how can I flesh this build out further re re using my uh, sigils and ruins and amulets and um, the sigils and ruins and amulets for me is sort of the 
not so much the sigils, but but the runes and the amulets are, are the things that help me fill out the character to to alleviate any weaknesses that I might have, um, or to buff existing uh, traits uh, to be even more effective. So if I want to have a very, very tough character and I've already traded into toughness, I can still use um, ruins and amulets to either make it tougher, uh, or if I find that I'm not doing enough damage uh, because I'm now too tough, um, but but my power is too low, then I can uh, give myself a little bit of power through ruins and amulets. The sigils, of course, is uh, weapon specific, so depending on what weapons you want to use, you'll have to choose uh, where to go with that. Um, and so for this particular build, uh, this is a ranger build, I decided to go with a signet heavy build. Um, the reason for that is not so much for the for the active part of this of the sigils uh, or signets, um, although they are very very useful and and definitely come into play uh, sometimes. The the passive and the active combined gives me a, a lot of condition removal, health regeneration, toughness, stability, and invulnerability. But most important to that is it actually is really simple to play because the passive part of it is so strong. Um, if you're a new player and you don't want to get overwhelmed, um, having that periodic condition removal um, is very nice. Having that uh, periodic health regeneration without having to do anything is also really nice. Um, and uh, toughness, just just bumping your toughness up as a as a static effect is is really cool um, and um, then if you do get in a pinch um, and as you get to learn the build a little bit more uh, you can start uh, using things like the invulnerability on your stone signet and um, little by little start engaging those those skills a little bit more but since this is Particularly for a noob, um, having those passive effects off of the of the sigils, uh, it just makes it for a lot simple gameplay and still get a lot of benefit out of it. Um, the traits that I'm going to select for this particular build um, is a zero zero six four four, and um, let's have a look at what those actually do. Okay, so uh, we looked at the basics, the, the, the fundamentals of some of the considerations for the bolts. Um, one of the things that I do first is to actually go to the Guild Wars Wiki website, as you can see here, um, and go to the list of traits for a particular class. And the reason why do that is it's a little bit better than actually going into the game uh, for several reasons. The, the first reason is, is that you actually get a nice description with links that tell you exactly what these things do. So when I look at the first line I can see that marksmanship trait is for rangers focusing on long range damage um, and also for signets. Now since we're using signets um, that's intriguing, so we can say, okay, well, what do we get out of this? So we can see uh, under the Adept line, Signet Mastery reduces the recharge of Signets. Um, there's one problem, though, in that this buffs our power, uh, and this is not where I want to start. Where I actually want to start with the particular build is from the toughness side, because the main feature of this build is... Uh, to have durability but also have damage. Uh, I want to have a look at the toughness and I see okay well Wilderness Survival is going to give me toughness and it's also going to give me condition damage so this already starts to create a little bit of a problem for me um, in the sense that marksmanship goes into power but um, it also gives me condition duration so if I'm going to do condition damage and the deeper I go into toughness, it might make sense to actually get a bit of condition duration as well. 
but uh, let's first have a look at this and then see uh, what do I actually get from these various things. Um, so marksmanship is for, for range and for signets. The skirmish um, is a trait that focuses on mobility and traps and switching between weapons of combat. Now I'm not looking at uh, at having any precision of, uh, or ferocity. Uh, I'm not going to use any traps so I can skip that one for now. The wilderness survival um, is a trait that focuses on defensive combat maneuvers. Alright, well, that sounds closer to what I want to do. Um, and from a damage perspective, I can actually look at condition damage. And because um, if I go full into toughness, I can also get uh, a max condition damage. It's an interesting idea, but um, it doesn't mean that I necessarily want to go full into this. I'll have to look at the various traits and see what it has to offer. Uh, the natural magic trait uh, for the rangers focuses on proved boons and spirits. Not really interested in the spirits, so I'll skip that one. Um, and beast mastery trait uh, focuses on the pet. Okay, well I'm not sure I want to use that one either. But it does give you health and pet bonuses. So my initial instincts by just reading uh, the descriptions... Uh, I wasn't overly excited about Beast Mastery or Natural Magic, but if you recall um, from the, the list I had before, uh, I don't trade into Marksmanship, although that might make sense, and I don't trade into Skirmish, um, so what's up with that? Well, having carefully studied the various traits, uh, some of the considerations that you need to look at aren't just the major traits but also the minor traits these are the traits that you get sort of out of the box if you go two points into wilderness survival you will automatically get the uh, nature's vigor so if i choose any of these adept skills um, then this minor trait will automatically be given to me um, same with a master if i go into a master level then i will get a companion's defense and if you look at this, you and your pet gain protection when you dodge roll. Well, that sounds quite interesting. Um, and you can see there's a link. Um, and you can open the link up and go and have a look look at the, the finer details um, if you're interested. So let's have a look see. Okay, well, it's two seconds of protection when I dodge. So if I dodge and I dodge again will I get four seconds of protection? Maybe. Um, normally it'll tell you what is sort of the cooldown on this. Uh, it doesn't seem like there is any cooldown. So then if there is no cooldown, I, I will actually get four seconds of protection, which is great. I can dodge, uh, wait for two seconds, dodge again, um, and then I'll have two seconds of protection. I can also drill down a little bit further into that and, and see, okay, well, um, protection uh, reduces the damage by 33%, um, but it does not affect condition damage. So, okay, it's just DPS. Uh, and that's what makes the, the wiki nice. Is you can actually drill down and, and go find out uh, the finer details about these items. Now, when I went through the trade line, one of the things that really jumped out at me was bark skin. Um, because I want to, to have a, a build that's pretty tough um, and uh, must be able to stand on its own, bark skin intrigued me because you and your pet take less damage while your health is um, below a certain threshold. So then I can go and load up the details for bark skin and say, okay, well, um, how long? So your damage is reduced by 50%, so you take half the damage, um, and this kicks in once your health reaches 25%. So, so this is really, really good. So this will become my starting point. And I said, okay, fine. Um, bar skin for me is going to be a must-have, uh, because it's going to gain me that, which means I'm going to go full into wilderness survival, because I'm going to get uh, the additional toughness as well but it's going to bump up my condition damage. Um, now why that's important is that when I actually do my weapon selection, uh, this will actually affect that. Um, it'll also affect things like what ruins do I want to use. Um, 
But having looked at that, um, now I need to see, okay, well, I'm going to go into the Grandmaster line. What if these other items are interesting for my build? Um, and I decided for number three, which is Shared Anguish. Um, and this has a 90 second cooldown, which seems actually quite long. And this is a consideration that you need to have because this means you will only have this ability to be available um, every 90 seconds. But for every 90 seconds, whenever you are stunned, dazed, knocked back, feared, etc., etc., um, that is transferred to your pet. So that means if I'm fighting someone uh, like a hammer warrior, his first blow will actually then go to the pet and um, provide me with the ability to to pop any of my skills that will give me stability and we'll have a look at that a little bit more detail when we actually look at the, the build in the game so I know that I want to use shed anguish here I know that I want to use bark skin um, and then one of the items that that also sort of jumped out to me was this one here whereby for every 15 seconds I gain regeneration when I suffer from bleeding, poisoning or burning. Which means as soon as I start fighting someone that puts bleeding, burning or poisoning on me, I get a bit of health regeneration. Okay, and this has a, a 15 second cooldown. The question is, um, how much healing is it going to give me? Because if it's only going to heal me for a small amount, um, then it might not be worth my while. And as you can see, my internet's quite slow today, so we'll just leave that to load up a bit. Um, and while we're waiting for that to load, uh, let's have a look at the other items. So, uh, as I explained before, Natural and Beast Mastery wasn't initially a major hit for me when I looked at the descriptions. But when I actually looked at the, what I would get when I go into more depth here, is that I get vitality and here I get healing now both of these items are quite important for me because I want to have a little bit more health and I want to be able to heal quite a bit more so then I can start looking through these items and say okay well what what actually looks like it could make sense Um, and there's a lot of items here that don't really apply. Like shouts applying regeneration and swiftness doesn't apply to me because I don't use shouts. So if I actually uh, trade it into that, that would be an absolute waste. Um, the signet of the wild, that might be interesting uh, because if my health drops, below a certain threshold then it automatically uses the signal of the wild even if I don't have it um, but the one that I went for at the end was to say all right well I want to be able to remove conditions it was one of the criteria that I've added before I actually started the bolt and going into the master line here whenever I dodge it removes blindness and poison now blindness is important to remove because if I want to finish an enemy and I'm blinded then I can't finish them so I want to be able to take that off and poison reduces my ability to heal which I also don't want so I want to be able to remove that as well um, so by being able to dodge and remove that um, that's great no more problems for me. Uh, as you can see here though, I've got um, a very interesting scenario happening. Uh, the numbers I all match up so that it's easy to remember. Um, but you can see I've got uh, V triple I which is 8 for, for my master levels throughout and then for my adept levels I've all got 6. So Looking at that, you can see here that I've got nature's protection, so that I receive protection whenever I take damage greater than a percentage of my health. Now, this is difficult to choose because um, it would also be nice for my regeneration to last longer because when 
I apply any regener regeneration, uh, which is part of my adept line that I get for free and other places as well. Um, it would be nice for it just to last a little bit longer, but I decided that since there are a lot of DPS classes out there, um, when I take damage greater than a certain percentage, I'd rather have the protection because I have a lot of other um, regeneration items and I can regenerate enough for not to actually have this. Um, but if you feel that this is something that you want to rather have a look at, then it's viable. I, I just decided that um, the protection is a, a better option for me. Um, and then also boosting my healing power. Uh, again, looking at number six, whenever I swap my pet, uh, I actually get uh, might. So the reason for that is, is that as soon as you start getting might, um, your damage is just improved. So because I'm trading so heavily now into into my survivability, I still want to be able to 1v1 and that's part of my criteria that I had. Um, where did I not define that? Oh yeah, potential 1v1. Uh, and I want to be on a point and actually fight back, not just survive, but be able to fight back. Now, to do that, I need, obviously, some damage. And I get a, a bit of damage out of my condition, so, so that's good. Um, but if I can buff that just a little bit on my pet swaps, um, that would also be really nice. So if you go to Might, uh, you can see how all this works out. I'm not going to go through all those details now. Um, and you can also see here in the Arkar Slave, the regeneration we get from that uh, bleeding, poison and burning is five seconds. Now, if you decide that um, you don't want to go for the protection, you want to rather have that regeneration. Whenever that um, Oak Heart Slave kicks in, this duration will increase. But it's normally only slightly. And I uh, it wasn't significant enough for me to say yes I must have this trait. Um, so for the Beast Mastery I went into uh, the Might Swap and then also that the Pets Gain Stability when disabled. Uh, the reason for that was is that um, the Pet is taking that st stability knock on my behalf every 90 seconds um, which puts the pet out of the fight. Now, a ranger has a pet for a reason. It's, call it his other half. So, I don't want the pet to, to be punished too much. Uh, and so, whenever the pet actually gets um, destabilized, if we can put it that way, um, for every 10 seconds, the, the pet will just get stability uh, when disabled. Um, so let's have a look at that uh, further in the game. Okay, we're now in Guild Wars 2 and as you can see I've actually set up my traits as we discussed before. Um, and let's start with uh, the skills that I chose. The, the healing spring out of all of the healing skills that we have, I mean these items actually heal for quite a bit. Um, and this is a brand new character, so you can see I don't have all the traits unlocked yet. Uh, 7000 healing, that's good. Heals me and my pet. That's something to be considered. Um, troll urgent, 900 per second for 10 seconds. That's, that's not bad either. Um, but I went with healing spring, and the reason why I went with healing spring is that it also cures conditions on allies. So I get that 5000 healing, I get another 4200 regeneration from it, but it also does um, condition removal and it also creates a water combo field. So if you start using combo finishers with your teammates, uh, as soon as you actually put down the water field um, and they use blast finishers on it, you can also get regeneration. 
Then I said that we're going to run a signet heavy, and here we can see the details on those. Um, the signet of renewal cures a condition every 10 seconds. So if I do nothing, all these passive effects happen. So every 10 seconds a condition is removed from me, I don't have to do anything. If I do get in a pinch though, and if I start getting a feel for the bolt, then I can activate the signet and then it will pull all the conditions from me to my pet. And you can also see that it's a stun breaker, which is always fantastic to have. Then the signet of the wild gives uh, health regeneration for me and for my pet. And then it also gives me stability if I actually activate it. Um, it enlarges the character for 8 seconds and you do 25% more damage. So that's, that's a nice active, but the thing that we're really after is the passive effect, which is that health regeneration. And then the signal of stone improves our toughness. Because we want a tough build, uh, by doing nothing else we get that uh, toughness. And if we do get in a pinch, we can activate the signet and then for six segments we take no incoming damage. Uh, and that's really good to survive because if I uh, use the signet and I put down the healing spring, I can actually get way full back into health again. Um, now, when it comes to my elite skills, uh, one of the items that could make sense to use is entangled because I actually do do condition damage um, and uh, it immobilizes the foes it's available every minute um, but the one that I decided to rather go with is Rampages 1 um, and the reason for that is that 24 seconds of stability um, it's just fantastic to have uh, especially when you're fighting against uh, hammer warriors or something like that uh, they can't knock you about and they actually become very easy to kill then uh, because the whole ace in the in the card gets lost what you also then get is a 20 percent uh, critical chance so so that's really nice um, so when we now look at this uh, we can see uh, our items that we've added we've reached, now looked at the wiki and uh, added to the game but that sort of limits what I can use for weapons because these are my, my strongest line currently is, is the conditions. If I used say uh, just a normal greatsword then I wouldn't get much out of this condition damage that I'm adding here. If I used a longbow it doesn't do any condition damage either. So to really utilize going so deep in wilderness survival it it makes more sense to add condition based weapons so when we look at the weapons that i've selected i've obviously got a short bow and then an axe and a torch and the reason why i've got the axe and the torch is just from a distance perspective um, i don't want to get the person up into the skirmishes yet still want to keep their distance a little bit um, and as you can see the axe number one doesn't actually do that much from a condition perspective it really is the axe number two um, that adds those three stacks of bleeding which is what we're after um, that and the fact that we also can get chilling so we can effectively chill someone now i can also use a dagger as a secondary that'll do conditions but i went for the torch because the burning is actually quite delicious on this build. It, it does a good amount of build burning damage um, and I can actually keep my distance from people to do that. I can also use the burning as a, a combo field. So in this case I'm just going to put it right on top of the golem and you can see there I'm ticking off nicely. Um, but I can also add it uh, on me and throw my axes through it and those axes will actually be lit up and go do damage as well. Um, let's just uh, quickly have a look at sorry the equipment that I've chosen. So 
we've established that we are going to use a short bow, the axe and the torch. If you feel comfortable uh, later on, you can swap this to a sword and then get um, some uh, references out of the, the uh, sword number two skill, which will evade uh, and do poisoning. Um, but uh, let's have a look quickly at the sigils because the sigils is what's going to buff my weaponry. So for the short bow, I used the sigil of agony because I'm can do a bit of uh, bleeding if I hit from the side or from behind uh, I can actually stack up the bleeding quite nicely so I want to increase the duration of those bleeds uh, before we go back to the other items I just want to show that um, there are a number of, of bleeds on this so if I use the number four skill on my short bow I can also get bleeding going and um, my number two skill gives me poison so those are all condition based items um, and then what's also really nice is the days all right let's go back so i've got the the increased bleeding because i do bleeds but i also do poison so i want to increase the duration of my poisons as well then for the axe I want to inflict the bleeding that I do so if I if I stand far away from someone and I use my number X my my X2 skill uh, I might hit one or two where this really becomes really valuable is if I'm up close and I use it because then all five items hit it I've got five stacks of bleeding um, and that now becomes a whole different ball game right uh, and then because of the torch uh, using fire I want to use actually that one's wrong I want to use smoldering right so what smoldering is going to give me is just increased burning duration because I do such nice burning damage uh, to extend the duration of that uh, is exactly what I want um, and then from a uh, ruins perspective it's kind of difficult to to go through the entire list of ruins and say oh crikey which one is now actually going to work best for me um, you can type into the search box and it will give you ruins that um, have something to do with condition as an example or you can say Give me something that that deals uh, with toughness and so you can actually shorten the list to go through uh, I went with the ruin of the undead because it gives me uh, extra condition damage which means I can do more condition damage and it also buffs my toughness which so this is like uh, trading into wilderness again you know it just buffs my toughness buffs my condition um, and it fits perfectly into the build. Now, when it comes to the amulets, there are a number of choices that I can make. Uh, rabbit would be one. Uh, so, here are all the items that do condition damage. Uh, and you, uh, you must decide. Uh, where do you feel is your weakness? If you want to do... Uh, a lot more condition damage um, but buff your vitality just a bit and get a bit more power out of it which would then help the axis um, you could use the carrion um, this one is all over the show so I'm just gonna ignore that um, the rabbit is a, a really good one because it gains toughness uh, plus a, a lot of extra condition damage um, so if I actually use rabbit you'll see my my crit chance goes up to 35% um, so that's an option I decided to uh, settle on the settler amulet uh, because of that uh, 900 toughness that I get and I get extra healing power and I get condition damage so 
I'm, I'm trading a little bit more into my toughness when I actually feel comfortable with the build and I see, all right, well, you know, I'm, I'm doing well, my rotations are working well, I get an idea of what I need to do, then I can start playing around with saying, okay, well, maybe I can do more damage now with this, because um, if I look now at my burning here, it, it becomes reasonably insane. Um, 740 odd damage on my burning and that was just one of my torch skills so you can play around with that and that's what makes the the amulets actually quite nice if you still very new and you and and, and you and you want to settle in you can go for the more toughness less damage option but still do enough damage um, and then as if you feel like now you you're actually getting the hang of it then you can go uh, heavier into the damage so one of the important things that we need to keep in mind is that there are various facets to the builds there are the traits that i use and the traits need to synergize as much as possible with the weapons and the skills that i'm using um, it doesn't always have to as you can see um, if I went into marksmanship I could have had signet mastery which reduces my signet recharge which means I can actually go quite heavy into this and another consideration for that is to say if I use uh, the beast master's might I can actually every time I use one of these uh, signets buff uh, myself with might so I can actually do a bit of might stacking but because that doesn't really fit into the the bigger picture of who this build is for their gameplay and the the role that this person's going to play this goes more towards the defensive than the offensive um, and because we're relying on the passives more than the actual actives um, we don't we don't really go into this um, so the traits have to balance the weapons it has to balance with the with the uh, skills um, and the sigils that you use uh, have to make sense with the type of weapons that you want to use before year I had hydromancy and what hydromancy does is uh, causes chill in an area which is good um, but if you want to start off with uh, actually having the smoldering uh, ex making your burns last longer uh, that that's primo for for the torch for now for this bolt um, so we have that synergy between the sigils and the weapons um, and then the the ruins the ruins is, is an interesting one because like I said before this can be your gap closer so um, if I wanted to buff my power but get a bit of toughness out of it um, then I could go say fighter I still can get my toughness but I can now do condition damage and a little bit more straight up damage um, if I wanted to have an interesting sort of dynamic on the poisons that I use I can uh, trait in or I can use the the ruin uh, to buff my poison uh, or my health regeneration um, so there are many 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 options here you need to decide on what makes most sense for your build on where you want to go um, and the amulets is then that final step that gives you that that final buff in the direction that you want to go for so now my build is more or less complete so my build is basically finished there's one last item for me to consider and that is my pet uh, because the pet is my second half um, it's quite important to try and select the right pet now I actually am quite stuck on two pets. I've just over time grown to love them very much. Um, that would be the juvenile wolf 
um, and then also the juvenile stalker and the reason for that is just the versatility that they bring if you look at the pet skills uh, my number f or the f2 on the juvenile wolf uh, creates fear which is fantastic to control a point um, and also to, to control a battle because um, on this build and also on my power ranger uh, I can cause fear and then strike a person uh, hard in the back while they effectively helpless uh, running away uh, then the bite uh, it does some damage I wouldn't write home about it it's not that fantastic but um, it does also do crippling damage um, and then the two second knockdown is also just fantastic I, I find that it's it's so disruptive to people's gameplay to be knocked back um, and though I'm doing condition damage and it would probably make sense to use more of a condition based pet um, the the fear and the knockdown I, I just find is something I can't live without um, and then for the juvenile stalker it actually gives me might stack so my f2 on this uh, provides me with with might which is always really nice to have um, it does decent damage um, but the mole is just fantastic uh, I, I really want to have the mole every 20 seconds I have that 10 seconds of four stack speeding that does 3300 damage um, so the the might stack uh, plus the mole uh, those are the pets for me you can look at other pets so um, a lot of these pets do condition damage this would be an example of a pet that does poisoning and this is really useful as well because the poison um, prevents your foe from healing up but because I do enough poisoning with my bow uh, I don't feel like that's something that I must have um, but go through the pets uh, and one of the best places to go as well is just to go to the wiki and go look them up there uh, it, it just provides you with a better interface to look at all the various stats of the pets and to decide um, the first thing I do when I want to test a new bolt is just uh, battle the NPCs uh, in Heart of the I Mist feel. if I can't manage to actually defeat the NPCs um, Specifically on a bolt that's supposed to have a good ability, um, then I need to go back to the drawing board and see why am I struggling and what do I need to change. This following section uh, is just that it's uh, rebattling the NPCs just to make sure that uh, the bolt in theory actually plays out in practice. For the elite to actually wear off so just playing around with a uh, golem in the meantime and then um, now I'm gonna take on Swan here I don't wanna uh, actually uh, take him on with the elite arm uh, because you can't depend on your elite all the time Elementalist left, and I'm purposefully ignoring the elementalist for now. 
because I want to see if I can actually battle the Lord while taking damage to sort of simulate what I might experience in the game. So that's the NPC stun, uh, now time to test it in the actual game. Feel the fires of Balthazar! Hold on to your points! Seize theirs! Stillness has appeared.
ferocity has appeared. Your enemy sees the altar. Control the gate! Tranquility has appeared! You have all three points! Hold them at all costs! Your enemy has the temple now! the altar! for watching my pvp uh, build theory uh, video i hope that it helps a little bit to make sense of all of these things um, please note that the same principles apply to all professions uh, different kinds of builds um, i will be sharing some of my other builds at some stage uh, which use this principle to actually determine and and they do pretty well for me or for my gameplay. Uh, please note though that um, there are no silver bullet builds. Each build has a weakness somewhere. Um, this particular build seems to be still a little bit vulnerable to massive condition damage, but it does well enough 
um, to to say okay it's a fairly good build for new players to to uh, get to know the class it's not over complicated um, and the gameplay dynamics is is reasonably simple so it reaches the objectives that it had as a build um, and as long as your build reaches the objectives that you set forth um, in my books that's that's a good build uh, it does what it needs to do that's all it needs to do um, so thank you very much for watching